If you are in the building, you can rise on your feet and pray in the Holy Ghost. You can pray in the Holy Ghost. You can pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on now, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are now. We want to take a flight. We want to take a flight tonight and trust the Lord that that in invisible hand of the divine will find expression in our midst tonight. Like I told you in the morning, when it comes to the matters of prayer, don't judge yourself by the person by your side. I know we are tired, we've been here since morning, I assure you, we'll soon be out. But be deliberate now, be deliberate now. Open your mouth if you have a prayer language and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Sabra kabo telemanda daria to prasakai. Eshabala barada bababababababababara kabo sadabarianati. Iskababo pali tanande kabila shada barakabo bababababababa. We want to activate that invisible hand of the divine tonight. Ushabara kabala kobe de bababababababasa. In the barako peliato la bate kabada yanante. Ushabara kabo de le badiata la bando la kabada rabaya. Eshababa baba binda le braso kabalia tole brasadi. Eshaba baba 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 baba. Lima kamo na kabila kabo de baria tobe la baya to. Eshaba baba 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 baya. Etole badia tobe la badia do brasanda baba ya. That my eyes will see the invisible one. Eshaba roko baba 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 ya. That my eyes will see the invisible one. The baruko bele kabila do da ba ya. Eskabo dele ba 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 ba. Lama lama kabo dele ba da ya ba. Eka da 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 baruko be. Eka ba 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 ba. Yade kebo lama laka ya. I thought you would pray. If you heard the words that were spoken by the servant of God. I thought hunger will be generated in your heart for the divine hand of God. Yes, young lady, pray. Young man, pray. Don't be left in the outer court tonight. Travel. Come higher. Come higher. Come higher. The Shabbat. Man de bona paradai. Let the cobe let the paradai. Rabba ba 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 ba. Rabba ba 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 ba. Oh my God, the paradai. The parosa. The Shabbat da paradai. Ya da ba 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 ba. The paradai da paradai ba 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 ba. Yes, pray. Yes, pray. Ademana kedio, edina ne kedia dayado. Hey, ne binana kedio ne kedia ne. Aya, sabele kedia. Somebody pray. Adabarana. Is 
sale que variate. ¡Ah! ¡Olivos! ¡Solivos! ¡Sabo de pata! ¡Y que te ven a pobreza! ¡Y que por la pata de pata! ¡Y que se mata de pata! ¡Y que te van a dar por la pata! ¡Y a pa 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 pa! ¡Y a pa 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 pa! ¡Adelo! 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 you will do the impossible you must see the invisible everything you see happening in the realm of the visible is moved by an invisible hand either the divine or the demonic you better move a hand now you better move a hand now you better be strategic enough to get that the hand of the divine in your direction and on your side
darkness flees before your light. Darkness flees before your light. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are brighter than the sun. You are brighter than the sun. Well, you are beautiful. Darkness flees before your light. Darkness flees before your light. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. One more time, let's get it. You are brighter. You are brighter than the sun. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Darkness flees before your light. Darkness flees before your light. You are holy. You are holy. Shakina, 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 you are holy. 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 you lift your hand to heaven and say glorious father I am here tonight what you do to those that love you do to me tonight let me not live here without an encounter with the Shekinah glory open your mouth and pray now it might look like a simple prayer but I saw you tonight you will see his glory he will come he will come he will visit, he will visit. He will touch. He will heal. He will deliver. He's second in our glory. He's second in our glory. Oh, man, I'm not okay, but I am. Ha, ha, ha. That devil is a liar. Satan, the blood is against you. Anima quade le botelia. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And so, Holy Ghost, it's the last day of the convergence for February. Our hearts are open. Our spirits are excited. We are stirred. We didn't gather tonight because we believe in any man. We gather tonight because we know that you are capable. Do the impossible tonight on site, online, everywhere that the sound of our voices can be heard. Let the confirmation that men were in this meeting be the impossible that has become testimonies in the lives of men. And Holy Spirit, when we are done, let the name of Jesus be glorified and let it be that the Father is highly exalted. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' awesome name, we have prayed. Be seated. Let's do 20, 25 minutes and then we'll dive into what God wants to do. We'll pray for the sick, we'll cast out devils, and then God's servant will prophesy.
upon us tonight. Second Kings chapter 2, this time we read 20 and 21. As we attempt to wrap this up. And he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. Stay sensitive tonight. As the teaching is going on, some of you might come under the intense atmosphere of God's presence. Many times, even without laying hands on people, meetings are closed, meetings are finished, and then I begin to get testimonies of healings. And those healings happened as the teaching was going on. So don't wait for the man of God to lay hands on you. Just be, just be prepared in your heart and in your spirit for what God will do tonight. And he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water and cast in the salt there and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water from it, there shall be no more death or barrenness. 22, so the water remains healed to this day according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Until Elisha appeared, such a situation or a scenario of healing, of deliverance, of restoration was not possible. But the minute Elisha appeared with the word of the Lord, an impossible situation became a testimony. Tonight, if that impossible situation is in your mind, it's in your body, it's in your finance, it's in your marriage, regardless of how difficult it looks, God is in the house tonight. And what I like about this scripture is that Immediately the water was healed. It said it remained healed even unto this day. What God wants to give to you tonight is something that is transgenerational. Your life is about to be altered permanently. Just in case you can't walk, they said you can't talk, they've told you all kinds of health issues. The healing of the Lord that will come upon you tonight is such that it will remain so. It's a testimony that you will tell even your great-grandchildren. Because what I saw that the Lord wants to do tonight is that he wants to put a marker in the spirit. He wants to give some of you a reference that you'll be able to point back and say it was at the convergence in February that the Lord turned my life around. But you see, brethren, as my brother was ministering, I was watching from the hotel trying to get into the reading of what it was that God was saying, many things in my spirit became altered. My brother was speaking about the power of convictions. On the journey of your faith, your convictions are critical to your arrival at your destination. In fact, your convictions have not become yours until they have been tested. If your convictions have never been tested, then you truly do not know what you believe. Because it is under pressure we'll be able to discover the truth about what it is you say that you believe. Anybody can profess anything as long as there is no pressure. The true test of your prof profession will be revealed under pressure. Some of you, what will happen after this convergence, all the prayers you have prayed, is that a season of testing is going to come. To determine whether the texture of your faith is truly what you claim it to be. And until you have been tested in such a way, you are, not, you are not qualified for manifestation. There are certain things God does not entrust to people until their convictions have been thoroughly tested. It is when their convictions have been tested and they have proven that what it is that they say they believe about God is true, then God knows that he can trust them with the next level of life and destiny. Because in that level of life and destiny, God knows that there will be no room for compromise. As my brother began to speak about the power of convictions, the Lord began to say to me that I'm going to move in power tonight. There's going to be healings. There's going to be miracles. I'm going to touch people. Prophetic impartations are going to happen. 
But I need to talk to you about the power of your secret life. It's easy to read this scripture and think that Elisha just appeared on the scene. If you had never seen in scripture that Elisha had to commit to a life of consecration to follow Elijah diligently. You may think that he operated in this dimension of prophetic grace, this dimension of power, this dimension of the release of the words of God just by accident. Elisha had a secret dimension of his life that had proven to God that he was such a vessel that was qualified to dispense all of God. One of the challenges in the body of Christ right now, apart from our struggle with our convictions, is that our secret life has become so corrupted. Many have become actors. You know, the Christian life is, is such that if you know the lingo and you know the dress code, you can pass as one of us in the public space. But Christianity is not just about lingo. When you are a Christian, there is a lingo we speak. But your speaking lingo does not make you a Christian. When you are a Christian, there is a way we dress. There is a way we order our lives in public. But ordering your life in public without going through the experience of transformation with God does not make you a believer. Your secret life with God is what determines how much of God God can entrust to you to mirror before a generation. Many people are failing in their public lives failing in, in, in the academics, failing in ministry, failing in every area of life just because God has not been able to get their secret life to look like what it wants to look like. He wants it to look like. When God began to speak to me, as I began to engage with him over the years, he told me that part of my calling was to raise him a Puritan army. An army of Puritans. A holy people. People who can stand even before the devil and they will say like Jesus said in John 14. The prince of this world cometh, and he has nothing in me. Brethren, I need to ask you tonight, even though God gives you a healing, God empowers you. God opens doors to you. What exactly does your secret life with God look like? What does it look like? We have sisters in the body of Christ who will think it an honor to sleep with their pastor. You know, every time I hear things like this, I, I, I wonder, your pastor invites you to his office. How does a pastor, I, I try to imagine it in my head, how does a pastor look at someone he teaches regularly on Sunday? And say, how does he say, it? I want to sleep with you, or you are fine? Or how, 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 does he, how does he make the proposal? How do they get to the point where they begin to discuss it? And then the sister literally walks into the pastor's house or a hotel and sleeps with the pastor. Okay, let me say that I don't even have problems with the pastor. That's not what I mean. But let me say that we know the pastor is a foolish person. But young lady, he sleeps with you and then you are sitting in the congregation and say, go deeper, sir. <laughs> Every Sunday, you still come back there and you are at ease. Not once have we seen you fall under conviction and cry and say, my secret life is a mess. You know why? Because even in the Christian space, we no longer probe into people's secret life. If he dresses like one of us and talks like one of us, and even though he's a thief in the office, we'll give him a front seat. Even if he's an armed robber, we'll, give him, we'll make him head of protocol. Just as long as he looks good, he talks good, we'll give him space. Nobody checks. In fact, in certain places, you, you can become a, a, a pastor in charge of a branch. Only because of the quantity of your tithe. If your tithing reaches a certain amount, then you are qualified to lead people. 
So a young lady in my city, her husband was working offshore and he comes back maybe once in five weeks, sometimes once in three months. So the young lady went to her pastor and said, she was just married, a young marriage. And she said, man of God, I don't know how they do this thing, but my body not if he stay. So once my husband goes, I am struggling with my appetite. The pastor said, small thing. He called her into his office and opened up his phone. He said, give me your phone. And she gave him his, her phone. She transferred some pornographic videos inside. I said, when your husband not there, they use this one, take the whole body. Be using this one. A pastor. That's, how, that's where people go. to. Their, their hands are laid on them, like my brother was saying in the morning. And a man of God lays hands on you, and the consequence of that encounter is that you become a victim of lust. The power of God. This is why we don't measure men by manifestations. We measure men by their secret life. Say you know that Satan can work miracles. Say you know that Satan can cast out devils. The Bible says that the seven sons of Sceva, they had seen people cast out devils like that before. And they wanted to attempt the same journey. Satan can cast out devils. If a smaller ranking demon appears before a higher ranking demon, he can use it to market himself like he has done something supernatural. Meanwhile, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew that when a demon is cast out, he goes to dry places looking for a place of rest. And when he finds none, he says, I will return to my house. And when I read that scripture, the Bible says he will come with seven demons more evil than himself. Notice he didn't say more powerful. More evil. The intention is to make sure that that person never recovers from that encounter. It's not just dominion, it's destruction. They want the life battered. They want the body destroyed. How dare you dislodge me from my house? What is your secret life with God like? Many of us have invited demons into our space from movies that we watch. The average Christian does not know that Satan has an agenda. Check Netflix now. Almost every movie, they must introduce characters that are either homosexual Introduce characters that are bisexual. Introduce characters that are whatever sexual. Because the LGBTQ now, keeps, there's a plus, 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 plus at the end. All kinds of multiple uh, genders, all kinds of multiple sexual orientations have begun to manifest. So even movies has an agenda. Music has an agenda. Entertainment has an agenda. So every time you expose yourself, what you are doing is that you are creating an atmosphere around your secret life that guarantees that Satan has a leeway into your space. Me and my brother were talking while we were sitting there. Matters of sexual immorality have become such a painful matter in the body of Christ. Some of the things that we know, if we open our mouth to say it, the body will bleed. Young men can speak in tongues and lead prayer. Make them fellowship president. They will sleep with members. Young ladies cannot stay chaste anymore in relationships. You just need to be on social media. You will weep. And the people that are commenting are believers. The way we even think there's a guy on Twitter who is giving people marital advice. He's not a believer. Believers, go there to comment. Yes, so you must test before you marry. Christians. People come on social media and say, I am a Christian, but I will not marry a woman who I don't cohabit with first. Ideas are flying around. And it looks as if Christianity does not have an answer to it because our secret lives are riddled with all kinds of appetites. 
And you know, I teach people. When you come before God, God is not just listening to your words. He's looking at the position of your heart. Men can be swayed with words. But what moves God is the alignment of your heart. So his sister comes into church and she's saying, Lord, I love you more than life. I love you more than ministry. Heaven just looks at her last one week and sees the direction that her secret cravings have gone in the last one week. And everything she's saying to God automatically appears as a lie. Because from Monday to Saturday, it has been obvious that she doesn't love God more than money. In the way she orders her private life, it is obvious that God is secondary. That there are things that she wants more than God. There are things that he loves more than God. Don't be one of those believers that come to church to fake it. You see, when my brother was speaking, at a point I closed my eyes and, and I, I was just grateful, grateful to God. Grateful to God that my youth service happened. Grateful to God. That that journey that God mandated that I should take to Adamawa State, I was just grateful to God. The reason I preach the way I preach, I'm like Moses. I saw the invisible. You can't threaten me with, with things that are in this realm. They are mundane. I know they have no bearing on my existence. When we recently got married, I told my wife, it's not you I'm afraid of. I've seen God. I've seen him. I came from class on the mountains of Mubi that day. I came from class. No, stay with me. Stay with me tonight. Stay with me. I came from class and that period blood running down my nose. The cold was intense. I, I felt discouragement like I had never felt before. And I was on a 40-day dry fast. Let me not say dry. I was drinking water and juice. The juice I was drinking is something called Nutrici. I don't know if they still sell them now. It was February of that year, 2005. February, 2005. I began on February 1st, 2005. I remember when God called me to that fast. He asked me, son, how far do you want to go? I said, very far. He said, give me 40 days. So I intentionally made sure I didn't carry food to the mountains. I put four books in my bag. I put sachets of nutrition. And then I started doing the trek to the mountain. And that is where I was for 40 days. One of the days, I think it's the 23rd or the 24th day, blood running down my nose. I was discouraged. I just left the mission class because we were there as missionaries. And I ran into my room, tears falling from my eyes. It seemed to me as if the reality of what I was doing just dawned on me. I had friends who came for youth service who were selling cows. They were shipping cows from the north to the, to the south to sell. They were making money. I had friends who were doing their, their masters. Their lives seemed to look very attractive and my own was looking like a waste. So I knelt by my bed and I started crying. I said, oh God, why, 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 why put this kind of thing on me? I say to you before heaven, I do not lie. As the tears fell from my eyes, I felt his hand. Wrap me by the side of the bed like this. If, you, if, if I tell you God has hands, it's not because I read it in scripture. I've seen the invisible. He held me by the bed and I heard him whisper in this my right ear. He said, son, I am here. What better place to be than where God is with you? What if I was outside of Mubi and God was not available? What stories would I have been able to tell? have vowed that I will not be one of those who the Bible describes that they draw close to me with their lips but their hearts are far. Beyond the miracle God wants to give you himself. But he can't give you himself if your secret life is corrupted. My calling is to raise an army of Puritans. You see I have taught people everywhere God privileges me to teach. That in Israel, they understood that men were in categories. There were men that are holy and clean. There were men that are holy and unclean. And there were men that are unclean and unholy. You know, every time we speak about holiness, the average believer at the back of their mind thinks about cleanliness and purity. 
But holiness is not just cleanliness and purity. Holiness is distinction. is separation unto God. It is dedication to the immortal spirit. So every man that comes into the world is first unclean. But at salvation, you are made clean. So even though you are made clean, you are not yet holy. In holiness, what happens is that you deliberately come and separate yourself unto God. In sanctification, sanctification is both instant and it is continuous. Instant in the sense that he says, come out from amongst them and be you what? Separate. So he separates you at salvation. But that process of sanctification needs to be continuous. After separating you, then you must dedicate yourself to him. He owns your thoughts. He owns your passions. He owns your ambitions. He owns your body. He owns your life. So even what you listen to is governed by him. What you watch is governed by him. The kind of things you crave are governed by him. That is a man that has become holy unto God. A man can be holy and unclean. A man can still be holy and clean. No, can be clean and holy, but cannot be unclean and holy. Every time you find a man that is clean, what happens is that he has given himself potential to become holy. But as long as you are unclean, you can never be holy. The entry point into holiness is first of all, cleanliness. So in every congregation, these three kinds of people exist. Saved men that are holy and consecrated unto God. Saved men that have refused to be holy. So they are saved. We have the same titles. Oh, brother this, sister that, pastor this, pastor that. But when we check their secret lives, we find out that there is another government there. They are not totally separated unto God. I was teaching somewhere. And parents, after the meeting, began to reach out to say, some of the things you speak about are hard. I told them that if your child comes to you now, your child, you know their parents, there are many of us that are parents here. You see us praying in tongues now, Beru Vakai. Me and my children, we are for you, Lord. We are for you. Let the child, after studying medicine, come now and say, God has told me to go and waste my life in Zamfara. The same children that they taught in, in morning devotion that God is ultimate and he can do with you as he pleases. Let the child come now after studying medicine for seven years. And after morning devotion in the morning, he drops the certificate and says, Daddy, Mommy, I want to thank you for training me. God bless you. But the certificate is yours. God has told me to go and waste my life in Pakistan. All I need is visa. I assure you, some parents who speak in tongues will say, my enemies are at it. This child wants to disgrace all my investment. So even those of us who claim to know God secretly in our heart, if God demands all, we will not give. We will not give. If as the man of God begins to prophesy tonight, he looks at you, I say, shut down your business. Thus says the Lord. <laughs> and go and be a missionary in Sokoto. <laughs> in some cases, it will be like Isaac. It will be like Abraham and Sarah. That one one spouse might decide that, look, that word is not for two of us. <laughs> After all, when Reverend Austin did his hand like this, it's you he was pointing. He didn't, he didn't say like this. He pointed to only you. You see, our dealings with God are heavily dependent on the state of our secret lives. 
God told me that some Christians will never hear his voice. Because deep down in their hearts, they are not willing to obey what he says. When he begins to come and give instructions, commands, and to make demands on our lives, we will not obey. So why waste your pearls before swine? Why begin to speak to ears that will only hear but will never do? Can God send you to die? Can God ask you never to marry? You know, I don't know. This is not what I plan to do. This is not, this is not what I plan to do. Sometimes I ask myself, why do you always make me go and say things that will put me in trouble? It, this is not what I plan to do. Can God ask you, young lady, do not marry? <laughs> Say you heard that. The lady cried out. She said, Jesus. <laughs> and you see, brethren, I have found out that God may not demand these things from everyone. He will come to the ones that he loves the most. Did you not read the story of Job? Eh? My sister, have you read Job? From chapter 1 to the end, what a story. What a story. I read about Job. I read it weeping. I stained my Bible with tears. How does a man's problem begin? Because God is proud of him. What kind of thing is this? I was sitting on my own. I didn't ask you to bless me. You blessed me. You, you, you bless me. I'm doing well. I'm honoring you. His children will go and do party. Job will wake up early hours of the morning with a sacrifice. He will go to the altar and say, I do not know. I was not there. But it's possible in their celebrations they sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. He was a priest that understood priesthood. He was sitting on his own. Didn't ask for anything. God prospered the work of his hands. He, he became a blessing. Stay. I told you in the intensity of God's presence, we hit this place and people will be overwhelmed. Just stay. And then Satan appears in the council meeting. Go and read it. It's not Satan that asked about Job. Satan came and God looked at him and said, Oga, okay, you come meet him. He said, yes. Where have you been? I've been roaming to and fro. He said, ah, you went to the earth. It means that you must have seen my servant Job. But I didn't just want you to see him. Have you considered? You know when you come to church and you say, Lord, I love you. God is saying you. <laughs> you like this. If I love you the way you want me to love you. It was, it was God. God was so proud of Job. He took an entire man's life. And just wanted to use that man to prove a point. Dear brother. Can God use you to prove a point? It was through the life of Job, Reverend, Reverend Jay, that God proved that a man can love him for nothing. You know, you, your love oscillates. It's high when your bank alerts are high. Your love for him increases when he answers all your prayers. I've been praying certain prayers for 10 years. The window has not opened. I've not even seen the ray of light. But I get up again and I continue to labor. 
The reason I have confidence to continue is that he has shown me some things prophetically. I've seen pictures. So I know his heart. He wants to give it to me. But the reason he has not given, I don't know. So I continue to pray. Sometimes I'm lying down. The place I'm lying is soaked with my own tears. But I keep praying. I don't know the person behind there. The reason your Christian life became crippled is because you thought that God refused to answer a prayer. And Satan took occasion of your faith waning and he entered your space. And now you can't recognize yourself again. This is not what you were like when you began with Jesus. What has happened to you? How did you become this thing? This thing? How did you become it? Took a grown man's life just because he was proud of him. You see, bro, I, I kneel before the Lord and I tell him, can you boast about me like you did about Job? God was not boasting about Job to men. He was boasting about Job to Satan. to Satan. Hmm. You see, I don't want to be one of those preachers that works miracles, that moves in signs and wonders. And then when I stand before the Lord, He says, I never knew you. We never had anything. There was nothing intimate between us. You are a fraud. I don't want to be that man. So as long as I have breath, I have read too many books, studied too much of the Bible to see that living men found God. God will never give us all of himself on this realm. It's until we move to the other side where we see him as he is. But there are dimensions of himself he has made available to a generation. How much of your portion have you secured? How much have you secured? How much? Then you begin to hear Job talk. And you wonder, is this a madman? Listen, we will never know the details of that matter until we meet Job in heaven. There is something that Job knew. There is something he saw. His wife came to him and said, Come on! This thing is too much for a man. Curse God and die. She knew that if he cursed God, God will kill him. She knew the consequence of going that route would mean God turning up his back on Job. She knew Job and God had something. So he cursed him and then die. Death is better than what you have now. Death. Job looked at his wife and said, Oh, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? Can a man expect only good from the hand of God? I preached a message many years ago. Bad things can happen to good people. At a point in my life, there's a man of God I used to submit to as my father in the Lord. He went to one of these camps in Lagos. And he was supposed to travel in three days to the United Kingdom with his family. In the middle of the program, he decided to come home, pack his things so that he could travel. On his way back, he saw an accident on Lagos Benin Expressway. So he stepped out of his vehicle with his wife and his three children to come and help the accident victims. While they were battling with the accident victims, a trailer was coming at top speed and lost brake entered into the road and brushed all the people his wife died instantly two children died instantly his leg was left fractured jaw fractured everywhere damaged when i walked into ubth to see him that's the university of benin teaching hospital his leg was hanging up like that the way they had used iron to hold his jaw together as i stood by the head of his bed 
I, 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 I bent my head. I could not understand. What did they do wrong? And then as the tears were falling from my own eyes and I was saying, Lord, please. He tried to open that mouth that there was iron. Trying to force a smile. And he said, Bishop, we give God glory. You see, brethren, in the body of Christ right now, we think that Christianity is about wearing a good suit. We are at war, brethren, and those on the other side, they don't play nice. Satan is not joking. Things will happen to you. One of my sons, they arrested him and took him to the prison for something he didn't do stripped him of his clothes he was naked only in boxers and then when we went to go and bring him out he had been there for some days there was pain in his heart but there was joy somewhere he said god gave him the opportunity to preach to men in that prison in fact when we got there the police were telling us that the boy they disturbed them for night when we get up he begin to clap his hands Jabo Cabellos. prisoners were joining him in prison sessions Do you love God enough that God can begin by his invisible hand to manipulate your life? Take you through pain knowing that he's holding you. If God is holding you through the pain, he will bring you out on the other side. He's holding you. He will never let you go. He will never let you go. Can you take wounds for the one that you love? Somebody sent me something that someone was saying about me somewhere. And then I, I entered into my closet and I said, Lord, what have I done wrong? This thing that I'm saying, I'm not saying it because I want to be popular. I have nothing to gain. You see, brother, I'm afraid of fame. I'm afraid. I don't want to lose God though. This microphone I'm holding is the hardest thing in my life. I like my secret life with God. I love it. I love it. I would rather be there. I've said it to my people many times. That's just that Makodi is too far. If Apostle was in my city, I'm ready to be going there to sit down every day and be taught. And let me just love God. Let me just have him. If he comes to me one day and says, Kesena, go and die. I want to carry my bag, look my wife in the eye and say, I've finished. I'm going to die now. And I will die with a badge of honor. That when they are looking at me, why are you dying? I'm dying for the one whom my heart loves. I will go and die. Because I served as a missionary in the north, I get missionary updates from time to time. There was this young missionary who went to serve in the north. I don't want to mention states and all of that. He went to serve there. He went there as a copper just as I went to Mubi as a copper. When he got there, he got married to his wife who also came as a copper. And then they had children. His own ministry was to set up a school there in the north and then be discipling the children. His own children were attending that same school. He had two young children. So one day he came down from the mountains and went into town for supply. He didn't know they had been targeting him. His car broke down on the road and he came out to fix it. These Fulani headsmen broke out from the bush and they chopped him like meat. How you will butcher meat? They butchered him with machetes like meat and left his parts on the ground. But that's not the story. So they went to console his widow. They were consoling her. It's okay, she cried. You see, brethren, I'm not ashamed of my tears. Sometimes the only language you have will come from your eyes. That's why David said, you are the one that collects my tears in your tear bottle. She cried. She, there was no other way to express the pain. She just cried. She wept and wept and wept and wept. And then after some days, she started packing her bags. He said, where are you going? I'm going to finish what my husband started. Packed her 
bags, carried her two children and went back to labor. She's still there laboring now. You, God, cannot even tell you not to marry. God cannot tell you to lay your life on the line. You see, as we leave this mountain, I am begging God. Let him do something to us that our secret lives will become attractive to him. So attractive to him that God can't resist you. That what he does to men that love him, he will begin to do to you. How he moves with men that are ready to die for him, he will begin to do with you. That there are dimensions of him, he will begin to open to you. How rich can a man be? How rich? There is something called being rich towards God. You can't quantify it in pounds or in dollars or in anything. There's a way to fill your bank account in heaven. One of the critical ways is with your secret life. With your secret life. Until my only gaze is you. Spirit could brew. Don't shout, just sing. Till I look more like you. Just sing, don't shout. You don't need to shout. Hey, until my only gaze. Oh, spirit keep brooding over me. Only man I can hear I. Until my only guess is you, spirit keep brooding over me, till I look more like you. You see, brethren, as we're about to leave this mountain, I, I, I want to wrap this up now so we can pray. I want you to crave God more than life. Crave him. The way people crave food, the way people crave sex, I want you to crave God. I didn't know how important my life was until I began to read scriptures and I saw that not once, not twice, three times, John 12, John 14, John 16, Jesus was the one that called Satan the prince of this world. <laughs> I did not take my life seriously until I began to see that in 1st John chapter 5 and verse 19 the Bible says we are of God little children but we know also that the entire world lieth under the control of the wicked one how does the wicked one gain control he uses men how come Satan can have men so dedicated to him in secret and in the open but God can't find loyalty Christians are coming to church to ask what, should, what can I do in a relationship is kissing Allah oh God Christians are smooshing. They are, they are getting physically intimate. But since there's no penetration, no sex, they, they say they come around and pretend that they are holy. Immorality has become a god in our pulpits. Uh, mammon has become a god in our pulpits. Pride, arrogance, a desire to be seen and known has become a God in my generation. And we are wondering, how come we can't have God? A man like Elisha come and say, Thus said the Lord. And lands will be healed. Tonight, I don't want you to leave this mountain with a secret life that is rotting. 
want you to live here with a secret life that is a mess. Some of you rolled off of the altar because God was taking too long. And now you don't know you have extended your journey for another 10 years. You didn't know how close you were. But the heat on the altar became too intense. Then you just decided to make a little compromise. And then now, your program in heaven has been extended for another 15 years. Wherever you are, if you want to sit, stand, kneel or lie down. I want you to go to Jesus now and say, heal my secret life. Heal it, Lord, heal. Heal my secret life. Inside, outside, online. I want you to go to God from the depth of your heart. I don't want to be telling stories anymore. Daddy, I love you. I oh my god, the parana cardo. Daddy, I love you. It's not a lie. I know the way I live sometimes it looks like I love something else more. But daddy, I love you. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, oh. Anamakabole manaya. Can you pray wherever you are? At the Babi Babo Babara. It was when your business began to expand. All of a sudden, Satan found a loophole. And your prayer life died. Your love for God died. Your commitment to God died. But you have continued to act. You have continued to pretend like everything is okay. But can you cry to God? I see a young lady in the overflow. Enough of immorality, lady. Enough of immorality, young lady. I see you in the overflow. Enough. Leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him. Please leave him. Enema kobila yedibara kobila. Anema nako. Don't worry. If you don't feel like praying, it's okay. God didn't send me to you tonight. I came for hearts that are bleeding. I came for souls that are broken. I came for men and women who recognize there's something wrong with me. Why don't I love prayer? And I can watch TV. Why don't I love Bible study? And I can read magazines. Something is wrong. I can act in church. But when I'm alone, my life is barren.
to miss what God wants to do tonight. Listen. Your spiritual life is dead. Dead because of compromise. There's restoration tonight. Restoration. I keep seeing young men and young women in the spirit whom the Lord is restoring their love for him. Restoring their love for him. There are some of us in this building, on site, online, that when we began with God, there was a fire raging. Satan could not get your attention. How did you drift so far? My brother was saying that men have a capacity to make a shipwreck of their faith. The Bible also tells us that men can drift away. How did you drift so far? And now you can't even recognize yourself. Is this the way you began with Jesus? Is this the way you began? I'm giving you three minutes, then we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You can still sit or stand. But when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, if that chair is not good, it's not allowing you to pray. You see, when you come to prayer meetings, you must know how to take a posture that allows you to pray. Don't take the posture of a weak person and then you're just sitting there and lazy. You must know how to pray in such a way that your spirit is stirred. Your mind knows you are praying. Your soul begins to cry out. There is fire in your belly. Take two minutes and tell the Lord, Set me on fire again, again, again. As I leave the convergence, I want to go and burn. I want to burn in prayer. I want to burn in Bible study. I want to burn in evangelism. Set me on fire. Come on, pray. I am a Kobe Laba. I'm tired of acting. Somebody needs to tell him, I'm tired of acting. Hey, I want to bless your heart. Jesus, my lover. Make sure you are praying.
I see people being uprooted and being repositioned. I see people being uprooted and repositioned. I see people who rings of darkness. I'm seeing somebody. They are like rings of darkness around you. But I just saw the flash of light. And those rings have been broken. And that person is being liberated now. As I'm speaking, it's happening. As I'm speaking, it's happening. As I'm speaking, it's happening. The rings of darkness over you broken. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. Just help the person. Because I want to make a call quickly and I don't want the front choked. Just help the person there. Just help the person. Anamakade, Lubre, Zana, Kobe, Zana, Mankobe, Lebaria. Oh, what an honor to be ordained and anointed. To be your man and your sector. Dancing the rhythm of your heart. What an honor to be ordained and anointed. To be your man and your scepter. Oh, oh, oh. Dancing the rhythm of your heart. What an honor Aya. to be your day and anointed, to be your man and your sister. Dance. Dance in the rhythm of your heart. One more time. What an honor. What an honor. What an honor. Yeah. To be your day and anointed, to be your man. To be a man and your sister. Listen now. I'm going to lead you to pray three prayer points in a way we don't normally do it, but I'm going to lead you. And then we'll pray for the sick. As we are praying those prayer points, deliverances will begin to happen. Then we'll pray for the sick. But before we pray, everywhere I go, God tells me to do this. Everywhere. Sexual immorality has finished your secret life. In fact, when I was talking about sleeping with a pastor, there are two ladies. I don't know if they are on site or they are online. Two ladies, you are implicated. You know the man you are having sex with is in ministry. One of them, the one you are having sex with is even married. And he's in ministry. And you know... Sexual immorality has finished your life. You know it. And you're saying, man of God, tonight I want to cut covenant with Jesus. That army God told you to raise, I want to march in that army. Wherever you are, come now. It's you I left the front open for. Come. If you're online and you are not ashamed, just type, I am one of them. Sexual immorality has damaged me. I am one of them. Come. You don't have to kneel except God tells you to. Come. I see the number 23. 23. That means I'm not going to be praying for less than 23 people. Where are they? Come. Come now. We don't have time. I'm going to count to five very shortly. If you don't come, I will move on. My secret life, sexual sin has damaged it. Those two ladies, come now. Don't hide. Don't hide. Come. I'm waiting. Don't struggle with Jesus. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. The Lord showed me the number 23. Oh! 
what an honor to be his man. To be his scepter. Dancing the rhythm of his heart. 23 of you, Jesus sent me to you. If God could help me. If God could help Reverend Austin. You've heard our stories many times. But now we, we, be, we have become his scepter. I'm waiting. They have to be at least 23. Media, help me check online. They have to be at least 23. I saw that number in the spirit. Come. Oh my God. The Lord keeps telling me there are three ladies that are not here yet. Where are they? Who are you forming for? I don't tell people to close their eyes. People are here crying. You are hiding. Three ladies. Once I see three ladies, I'll begin to pray. Even if they are not up to 23. There are three ladies now in the heart of God now. I'm waiting for you. Come quickly. Come. Are you coming, lady? Come, come. Don't be shy. Come. Where are they? How many? Ten online. Thank God. If you are in this house, stretch your hands to them now. Stretch your hands to them now. Stretch your hands to them now. And ask the Lord to show mercy. And break the hold of every strange addiction. Some might be homosexuality. They are also online. We stretch our hands to you that is online also. Pray for them brethren. Pray. Pray. That death and barrenness will end. Every death and barrenness as a result of immorality. They've not been able to make progress with God. They've not been able to make progress in life. Because the devil took a yoke of immorality and put it on their necks. We break those yokes. We break those chains. We, we purify their appetites on site and online. The Lord begins a surgical walk. They are being disconnected from immorality. Right now. I'm not hearing brothers and sisters praying. Is it because you are not praying for yourself? Scepters of the Lord must rise from this meeting. Men that dance to the rhythm of his heart. Not the rhythm of sex. Not the rhythm of money. Not the rhythm of fame. They dance. Beg the Lord. That pornography, the appetite for porn will die. Those are our two sisters sleeping with men of God. Ask the Lord to give them strength to break those relationships. Tonight, not tomorrow. Tonight. Holy Ghost, we bring our brothers and sisters. We say enough to the devil. We say enough to the devil. Satan, you don't own this one. They have been bought with a price. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, behold our brothers and sisters. More than 23 of them, like you showed us. I pray, oh God, I pray, oh God, that whatever hold it is, every appetite, sexual in nature, those, oh my God, I don't know if the three people are here struggling with same-sex attraction. Struggling with same-sex attraction. Help her there. Help her. Help her. Help her. Same-sex attraction. Same-sex attraction. Mande barako perati prazis. I know that spirit. Every time I touch it, I can tell. There are three. There are three. 
Lord, I pray that that demon, that demon, that demon, demon, you know I know you. Leave that body now. On site and online. Oh my God. There's a deliverance happening online now. There's somebody online in your room. In your room. In your room. In your room. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Lord. We decree a mighty deliverance tonight. A mighty deliverance tonight. Homosexual spirits, lesbian spirits, bisexual spirits, every spirit of sexual immorality. I stand as God's servant. You are judged. You are judged. You are judged. I don't know if the person is here online. That spirit became attached to you because you were abused. You were raped. You were raped. And since that time, your appetite became corrupted. The Lord is telling me that the problem is that your soul became broken. And your soul has not healed. The Lord is healing your soul now. You will feel it like a, like a river of water, like cold water. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, your soul is being healed. That was the doorway that Satan used. That was the door. Oh my God, Peranica Dwai, Yandi Kapruzi Manekai, Joseph Razata, on site and online. Lord, let that river, that stream, that make it glad the city of God begin to wash, wash away that field, wash away that guilt, heal that soul. Now, 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 now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's someone around here. Someone around here. When I spoke about sexual abuse, your heart leapt. Because you've experienced sexual abuse. And it almost damaged your life. You are not in immorality, but you are still not healed. Hate floods your soul. The person is somewhere around here. I don't know if the person will be bold enough to come. But leave it. Let's not, let's not, let's not bring you out. Stay where you are. That's, that's personal information. Stay where you are. But the Lord is also healing your soul now. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. It will be like cold water. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you have done to these ones, Lord. We will never again hear that Satan gained advantage over them. We take the legal foothold from Satan. We withdraw it. We withdraw it tonight. We take them from the miry clay and we set them upon the rock that is Jesus. Let appetites be changed now. Lord, I have seen you transform homosexuals from one meeting. One meeting. They got up and the appetite died. Every appetite for illicit sexual pleasure. Bisexuality, homosexuality, lesbianism, adultery, fornication. Lord, that appetite dies here tonight. They will not get up and go and masturbate. They will not get up and go and look at porn. From today, their, their soul gates are purified. Every one of them rises victorious. If your amen is louder, it will happen quicker. I said every one of them rises victorious. I said they rise victorious. Every stronghold of the devil is hereby shattered in the name of Jesus. Jesus. If, if you, you say, say that, that amen, amen, it happens. Just as scripture says in the book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, by this encounter, you are shifted from the dominion of darkness. You are brought under the authority and the government of Jesus. Every of your appetites are governed by the Spirit of God. So shall it be henceforth. In Jesus' name we are praying. I want to move also three prayer points quickly, but you see, the Lord is telling me that there are some that are not yet born again. I'm not going to call you out. Wherever you are, you need to give your life to Christ. Quickly. We've run out of time. Quickly. Christianity is not the joining of a denomination. Men of God, do we have counselors? Rev, what do we do? Rev, do we send them to counselors? Okay. Pastor Mike, please. If you came out, just wait on the outside there. Somebody needs to see you. We want to pray for you. We want to, we want to mentor you, show you how to live a victorious life. So ushers, just gather them out there. Let Pastor Mike speak to them quickly. And then the, those that are not born again, we join them. The Bible says that the way salvation happens 
is that you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Otherwise, you are not born again. Even though you were born into a Christian home, even if you grew up in church and you have even become a pastor, if there is no record in the spirit that there was a day you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth, you are not a child of God. That's the way to salvation. You believe unto justification. That yes, I'm a sinner, but I've been justified. I've been declared not guilty. By the sacrifice of Jesus. Then you confess unto salvation. Now, I am the Lord's own. He's my Lord and my Savior. I am no longer a slave of Satan. If you've never done that in your life, ushers, take note now. We want to identify them. Raise your right hand. If you're online, just simply say, I want to be born again. Raise your right hand quickly, 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 quickly. Raise your right hand. I see five people that need to be saved. Five. Five. So ushers on in the overflow, count for me. Five hands. I need to see five hands. At least five hands. I've been around church, but I'm not really born again. I've been around church, but I've never really given my life. On site and online, I'm waiting for five hands. Once they're up to five, tell me so I move on. Three prayer points and then we pray for the sick. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I've never really given my life to Christ. Never. Once I see those five hands, I will add backsliders. Ushers, do we have five? Media, do we have any hand online? Quickly, quickly, quickly. The Lord told me five. I want to be saved. I'm tired of pretending like I know God. And yet I'm not born again. I'm not born again. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Is somebody checking outside for me? Is somebody really counting outside? Five hands. Five. Getting saved tonight for the first time. I've been in church, but I've never really given my life to Christ. Where are they? Where are they? One outside. One outside. Do we have any online? Not yet. The Lord told me there are five. Bring, bring, let that person come quickly. Since it's one, come. The Lord told me there are five. I know how God speaks to me, so it's not a... God bless you, beloved. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Hold my hand. Repeat after me. Say, Lord... I admit I'm a sinner. I recognize also that for me you died. You washed me with your blood. You cleansed me from my filth. You made me your own. Today, I commit to you my body, my soul, my spirit. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. From this day henceforth, with all that I am and all that I have, I will serve you to my dying day. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me a new life. Thank you for washing away my sins and making me your bride. From henceforth, I announce I am born again. Receive the Holy Ghost. Now, Pater, pause. I said receive the Holy Ghost. That devil is a liar. Yes, yes, yes. You must come out of that body. Now. Now. Come out of that body now. That devil is a liar. Shabara kwata pario, epera na kobiatai. Now, now, loose her, loose her. I said, loose that, loose her, loose her, loose her, loose her. Come out of the ears, come out of the mouth, come out of the navel. This body now belongs to Jesus. We cast you out, devil. Now. We empty her soul of every government of darkness and we install the kingdom of God. The throne of God is established over this life. Now, everything that ties you to your bloodline, we lose you, we lose you, we lose you. That's why God brought you to this meeting. He saves your soul, he delivers your body, he delivers your spirit. Now! Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Rise on your feet now. Three prayer points. We want to dive. Quickly, we'll pray these prayer points quickly. And then I'm going to hand over to my brother. 
I will pray for the sick and I will trust God for instant miracles. Instant miracles. The first prayer you will pray. This is how I want you to pray tonight. You will shout on the top of your voice. You will say, Father. Follow me closely tonight. It may look foolish. It may look stupid. It may look like we are, we are carnal or we are fake. But I want you to pray from the depth of your soul. The first prayer you are going to pray is that you are going to tell the Lord, enough is enough. Every death, every barrenness. You are going to say, enough is enough. Lift up your voice. Say, Father. By the power in the name of Jesus. Concerning my life. Every death. Every barrenness. Enough is enough. Open your mouth and pray now. Pray. Pray. If you like, don't pray. Close your mouth. You are not praying for me. You are praying for yourself. We say no to you. No to your works. No to your ways. No to your plans. We say no. Satan be gone. Come on, pray. Say no to you. No to your work. No to your plans. Barriness in my body. Barriness in my mind. Barriness in my spirit. Barriness in my academics. Barriness in my finances. I say no. Enough. 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 Enough, enough. We say no to you. Somebody pray a little more. You have two more minutes. You have two more minutes. Confront that devil. Confront that devil. Confront that devil. When I say in the name of Jesus, let your amen be loud. The kind of amen that slaps the devil. The kind of amen that will dislodge Satan. Because every barrenness dies. Women will carry children. In the next nine months, on site and online, we are going to dedicate our CN Lagos babies. For people that have been waiting for long, if I be a man of God, if God sent me to this year convergence, in nine months, according to the time of life, babies are deposited in wombs. If your amen is loud, it will happen. I said it will happen. I said it will happen. I said it will happen. In the name that's above every other name. I just want your amen to be loud when I finish praying. Every barrenness, every death, I stand as God's servant and I curse you in the name of Jesus. After this conference, you never rise again. Men become fruitful in their academics. They become fruitful in their finances. They become fruitful in their businesses. Every stranglehold of death is banished forever now in the name of jesus i just saw the lord 
release a reality in the spirit. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, I'm infusing people with life. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Life, 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 life in your hands, in your mind, in your body. Aha, aha, aha. It's fire. It will come like fire. Life. Quickly, you repair, you pray after, after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh, you came to joke. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I divorce myself from every oppression of the demonic. Spiritual soul ties, demonic marriages, demonic anointings, demonic impartations. I divorce myself. Pray now. I beg you, pray. It's a prayer and prophetic conference. I divorce myself. Every demonic oppression, every soul tie, demonic marriages, demonic anointings, demonic impartations. You went somewhere, they laid hands on you and damaged your destiny. As you are praying, some of you, the power of God will hit you. The power of God will hit you. Inside and outside. The power. Aha, the power is coming now. The power is coming. There are three people. You will be overwhelmed as you are praying. As you are praying. As you are praying. As you are praying. The divorce is happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. There's a young man I'm seeing. That demonic marriage. It has ended. Oh my God. The divorce is happening. Your spirit is being loose. Your body is being broken free. Your soul is escaping. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. And your soul escapes. Yes, pray for one more minute. The divorce is happening. Yes! Yes! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. Don't fall asleep tonight. I said in Jesus' name we are praying. Holy Ghost from my right to my left, a divorce has happened now. You showed me there were three that came under the power as a sign. As I pray now, help me identify them. That divorce in the, in the spirit. That divorce, that divorce, that divorce, that divorce. Give us a sign. Come upon three, upon three. I know the Lord touched one there. There are remaining two, there are remaining two. That's two there. Holy Ghost, one more, one more. Yes, 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 as a sign, as a sign, as a sign, as a sign. From the back to the front, from my right to my left. Fire! It's a divorce. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's a divorce. Somebody shout, I divorce. From every demonic attachment. Demonic oppression. Demonic manipulation. Demonic anointings. Say in the name of Jesus and say loud amen. Say in the name of Jesus and say loud amen. Let your amen be loud. Finally, before we pray for the sick, you are going to rebel against every sickness. Sickness in your body, sickness in your mind, sickness in your soul. Let me tell a lady here, there are mood swings that are normal and there are mood swings that are demonic. That you are in the heights of joy. Two minutes you are in the belly of despair is a demon. It will jump from your body tonight. That demon will leave that area of your emotions tonight. Tonight! Tonight! In the name of Jesus. Even if the sickness is in your finances, if the sickness is in your spiritual life, are you not tired of rising and falling? All the days of John, he was a burning and a shining light. His light never dimmed. The rage of his flames never quenched. Till he died. 
He was a burning and a shining. Even in prison, they were still afraid of him. They knew the only way to shut him down was to kill him. They were still afraid of him. I want you to lift your voice. This is the last prayer point. Then I'll begin to command sicknesses to go. Oh my God, there's a brother I'm seeing. I need to lay hands on you. At certain seasons of the year, it will begin to look like you are going to lose your mind. Where is this brother? Come. Come quickly, quickly. It will be looking like you are going to lose your mind. At certain seasons of the, of the year, it will look like something will be telling you to run. Act strange. Where is this brother? If you are outside, come quickly. If you are online, say I'm online. I'm seeing a brother. Certain seasons of the year, it will just come. That devil is a liar. We want to set you free. Where's the brother? Where's the brother? Your mind, your mind is where the affliction is. Your mind is where the affliction is. Where's that young man? I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you. Holy Ghost. As I lay my hands upon him, I speak health and healing to his mental faculties. Oh, spirit of, of discomfort, spirit of imbalance, spirit of disorientation, spirit of confusion and disorder. Go! You attached yourself to this life, but you don't belong here. From now, your mind is healed. That demonic cycle that was put over your mind, I scatter it. I bring you under the cycle of heaven now. And in, according to the cycle of heaven, every time of the year, your mind will be balanced. So shall it be. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Quickly lift up your voice. Say, in the name of Jesus. Any kind of sickness, wherever you are located, in my body, in my mind, in my business, in my family, in my financial life. Come out and never return. Open now. Open your mouth now and pray. Come out. You can put your hand where the sickness is. If there is a sickness in your body, put your hand there. And command that sickness never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Your mind is healed. Your body is healed. Your eyes are healed. Your legs are healed. Your waist is healed. Your breast is healed. That cancer is gone. That lung disease is gone. That autism is gone. That pain is gone. It's gone. Blindness gone. Deafness gone. Dumbness gone. Every crippled state gone. Holy Ghost. Sickness, leave, 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 leave. Fibroid, come. Lumps and growths, vanish. Eyes begin to see, ears begin to hear. Let dumb tongues begin to speak. On site and online, let miracles begin to happen now. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and begin to give him glory. I'm going to pray one last prayer and my brother will come. And then if there are testimonies, there will be testimonies obviously. We will take a few. Lift your hand, give him glory. Thank him for a mighty deliverance. Not everybody will fall under the anointing, but nobody lives here empty handed. Nobody. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father, right now, so that the faiths of your people will be greatly stirred. Instant miracles. 
Photophobia, let it go. Pain in the eyes, eyes that can't see. Be open now. Pain, go, 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 go. You came into this meeting with pain. That pain is leaving you now. Pain in the back, pain in the waist, pain in the knees, pain in the head, migraine, sinuses, whatever name they bear, discomfort, it leaves you now in the name of Jesus. I command eyes to see, ears to hear. Let dumb tongues begin to speak. Father, right now, there are diseases that people's hands cannot reach. I pray, Lord, that you will go to blood diseases. Let SS become AA. Every strange disease of the blood, diabetes, all kinds of things that doctors have told you, I reverse them now in the name of Jesus. I call you healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Real quick, in three minutes, if you could not bend before bend, if you could not stand, stand. If you could not look at the light, you are photophobic, look at it now. If there was pain in your eyes, your ears could not hear, check now. Try, try, try quickly. I want to give you one minute. Let's take two or three testimonies and then we'll move into the prophetic impartation. We have not closed yet. There's a prophetic impartation. There are activations that are going to happen tonight. Some of you, you are going to see the prophetic side of your Christian life. As a Christian, you shouldn't be blind, you shouldn't be deaf, you shouldn't be dumb. You must know how to say, toss here the Lord. That's what I was going to teach on earlier. The toss here of the Lord. It's, it's your inheritance by virtue of your union with Christ. You must know how to speak choice words to situations. Not the words of your emotions, the words that come from the table of the Spirit. But many Christians are dumb, many are blind, many are deaf. As my brother comes, he, tell, he said it, when it comes to worry, I announce to people, I know he's a genuine prophet. The word of God is on his mouth. As he speaks tonight, those impartations will happen. You feel pain that has left your body, come now. I just want to take three, te three testimonies. Your eye could not see clearly before and you are seeing clearly now. Sinuses gone, pain gone, ear that could not hear, you are hearing now. You are hearing now. Come, 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 come. I just want to take three testimonies on site and online. Quickly. On site and online. Quickly. Quickly. You prayed about your eyes. You prayed about your body. There's a pain that you were feeling before you came. And then you notice it is gone. Come quickly. The rule is if nothing happens, say nothing. If something happens, say something. I don't need help. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not under pressure. If you are coming, come now, come now, come now, come now, come now. There are miracles, come. Come. Every time we pray for the sick, God heals eyes. He heals eyes. So I know that there are eye miracles in this building. There are eye miracles. Even if not on site, it will be online. Eye miracles. I'm seeing somebody that your right side, right side, right side, there has been pain from your shoulder down. And this pain comes and goes, comes and goes. And sometimes when it comes upon you, it's almost like you are immobile. But that demon of, of trauma that has been attached to that shoulder, that has been causing that pain to go down, I saw it jump out. I saw it jump out. That person is healed now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Pivi. Quickly. If you have your testimony and you can say it quickly, you can join them. We'll just take a few and then we'll go because miracles are happening. There are people that need to come from the overflow. I see that the hand of God has healed two people there. Don't hold your testimony. Come. Come from the overflow. Come. Come from the overflow. I see two miracles we need to hear from the overflow. Come. PV, go ahead, please. Praise the Lord. I had um, malaria and even after treating, it was like it was worse. I was actually really contemplating not coming for the program at all. I was supposed to officiate, but I came immediately after the prayer. I just looked at my mama. I was like, I'm healed. Glory to like, God. I just knew it. Praise God. Can you celebrate Jesus? Come, come, sister, come. That stubborn malaria will never return. You are healed totally. Help her, please. Help her, help her. You are totally healed. 
Yes, sir. Let's go. Glory to God. Um, is she from the overflow? I saw two, two. There's one more that needs to come from that overflow. What happened there? I had a pain on my right knee since January up since, to this point. It's yes. very severe. Like sometimes I can't even raise my leg like this. And you are raising it now? And I'm, I've been trying it there since. And, and it's working? I'm not feeling that pain like before since January up to this point. The pain, you can no longer feel it like you used to? Yes. Come on now. Can you give God glory? That's a miracle there. Since January... The two from the overflow. Glory to God. Come, 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 man of God. Come, come, come. That pain will never return. You are totally healed in the name of Jesus. What happened there? What happened there? Migraine gone instantly. Instantly. Come on now. If you have migraine anywhere, whether on site, come, come. Whether on site or online, that migraine will never return in the name of Jesus. Your, your mind and your head and your brain are totally immersed in the blood. Yes! In the name of Jesus. What happened there? Yes, my, my right eye. Yes. While you were ministering. Yes. It was so painful. I couldn't open it. I was only seeing with one eye. Yes. But while the prayers were going on, the eyes, the pain just fizzled out. And you can see with that eye now? Yes. And my right, the right side of my neck. Yes. I was feeling pains. I couldn't bend. You couldn't bend? I, I, I can't see My God. Anymore. My God. Can you give God glory? <laughs> miracles. Miracles. Come. Come, come, come. We'll take these ones and then we'll end. Lord, this healing is permanent. Your eyes will never ache again. God is not just giving you physical sight with that eye. You'll begin to see in the spirit. You are one of those that my brother will activate tonight. Thank you, Father. Yes, what happened there? I usually feel this pain on my shoulder. On your shoulder? It comes and goes. And goes. Is that right or left? Left, head. okay. Yes. And then I didn't even realize till you mentioned it that the pain, the pain had gone. gone. My God. So Somebody just give the Lord a wave. Give the Lord a wave. Give him a wave. Come, 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 come. That pain will never return. You are totally healed. In the name of Jesus. What happened there? Pain on my right side of my back. Of your back? Yeah, as you were saying, um, pain on the back. It was like a second after. Um, I didn't want to check, but I did like this and the pain has gone. The pain has gone. Yeah. How long have you had that pain? Um, I think for, for days. I think it's how I slept. Okay. But it's been there and it's been affecting. And there's been discomfort, but it's gone yes, now. Yes, yes. Come, yes. come. It will never return. In the name of Jesus, you are totally healed. In the name of Jesus. PRB, please help me check. I, I'm expecting miracles online. Online, yes. Yes, I, I came to today's service having pain on my knee. On your knee. And I remember before I left my house, I was saying that. Lord, I believe and trust you that I will not go back with that, with that pain. And the pain is gone. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe it's because Mama spoke about knees. Come, come, come. The Lord decided to shame that demon of knee pain. So if you have anything with your mobility, knee, waist, and you can't walk properly and there's been pain, that demon of arthritis, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. That demon of arthritis is bound forever. Pain will never return to your body. In the name of Jesus. Can we receive God's prophet now? Stand on your feet. Okay, there's one more there. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Online. Is that online? Yes, what's that? Stand on your feet. Be prepared because something, an avalanche is coming from God. Quickly, quickly. What happened there? Somebody was healed in the eyes, eyes. online. Online. Eye miracles. So even if you prayed for your eyes and you've not seen it, before you get home, you will no longer need those glasses. Begin to thank him now. 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 You are not living the convergence the same. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him.